use me for His glory. Amen? Amen. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. I, this verse is an amazing verse. Powerful verse. This verse will change your Christian life if you can capture it and if you can get the understanding that is in this verse. So pay attention for the next few minutes as I unpack this verse, and I know that we'll be blessed today. The Word of the Lord says, If we believe not, yet He abides faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Let's read that again. If we believe not, if we don't believe, if we don't have faith, Yet God abides faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Everybody say, God is faithful. God is faithful. We're going to look at that this morning. God is faithful. He is a faithful God. I was studying this chapter this week, and I've read this chapter many, many times. When I came to that verse... And I read it, it jumped out on me. The Holy Spirit uh, deposited that into my spirit. And I began to see something there that is so, so powerful with regards to the faithfulness of God. His faithfulness is, is constant. His faithfulness is consistent. His faithfulness remains regardless of my Faith. Regardless if I believe or not, He remains faithful. Amen. The word abides means to remain, to stay, to continue, and to wait. God is willing to wait for us while we don't believe. God is willing to wait for us while we're struggling in our faith. God is willing to wait for us on the journey of faith, when He takes us into areas where we, where we find ourselves doubting, He's willing to wait. He remains faithful. He continues and He stays. Amen. Hallelujah. He stays faithful. The word faithful means trustworthy, true, firm. I love this. Faithful means full of faith. God is full of faith. He is a faithful God. And the word faithful means constant. Amen. So all these things God is. He is trustworthy. He is true. He is firm. He is full of faith. He is constant. And He is this way all the time. He remains faithful. And that's a powerful concept for you to understand, that He does not change. His faithfulness is not subject to our faith. His faithfulness is not even subject to our obedience. He is, he is faithful. He is constant. He is trustworthy. He is full of faith. And so if we can understand the faithfulness of God and how His faithfulness works for us on our journey of faith, it will change our walk and our relationship with God. If you can understand God's faithfulness, that it, He is faithful, if I don't believe He is still faithful, that changes everything. God's faithfulness is subject not by what we do, but by who He is. He is faithful. Come on, say that again. God is faithful. Come on, prophesy. God is faithful. Our unbelief will not change God's faithfulness. Our unbelief will not change God's faithfulness. His love and His grace is not moved or is not confused by our unbelief or our lack of faith in any area of life. I'm going to say that again. God's, God's love, God's grace is not moved or confused by your unbelief. God doesn't say, well, you don't believe. Now I'm confused with regards to my grace and my love. 
God doesn't say, oh, you don't believe in this area or you don't believe for your healing or you don't believe that I can open that door so I'm not going to be faithful anymore. No, no. It's just because you don't believe does not mean God stops being faithful. He is faithful. Our unbelief does not change God's faithfulness. He stays. He remains. He's constant. He's steadfast. He's willing to take you on a journey. He's patient. He's patient. Because of His faithfulness, God is willing to work with us and take us on a journey towards all that He has called us to be. Because of God's faithfulness, God is willing to take us on a journey. Come on. So that we can be all that God has called us to be. Seasons of doubt in your life, seasons of frustration, seasons of confusion on your behalf and failure don't stop Him from being faithful. You're going to go through seasons of doubt where you don't believe. You're going to go through seasons of frustration. You're going to go through times where you are confused and you're you're even going to fail but that does not stop him from being faithful. Now, the problem with our unbelief from our end, the problem with unbelief from our end is that it limits us from advancing. It limits us from changing and growing and from attaining the promises of God. It, and so I want you to see this. It doesn't change God's position. So my lack of faith, my lack of of uh, belief, my lack, lack of trust, doesn't change God one bit, but it does limit me. It does, it does limit me from advancing, from, ad, from conquering, from attaining the promises of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 3 says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God of no effect? What's the answer there? Romans 3 3. For what? So, what if some did not believe? Question mark. Will their unbelief make the faith of God of no effect? It's a question mark. It's a question mark. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? What's the answer there? Will it, will it cause faith of God to be paralyzed? The word no effect means to be paralyzed. Will the unbelief of some cause God's faith to stop? Will it cause God's faith to be of no effect? Will it paralyze God's faith? What's the answer? No, it won't. His faith is still powerful. He is still faithful. If we can tap into that, amen, all things are possible to him that believes. God always believes. He is faith. God is always faithful. But the problem of our unbelief, the problem of our doubt, is not that it changes God. It just causes us to not change. We stay in the same place. God is still powerful. God's faith is still in effect. As a matter of fact, God's faith is working every day. His Word is so powerful that when He said, let there be light, light is still going. He's not like, oh no, the, the earth, there's no faith on the earth. My faith is being limited. No, no, he's, he is faithful. He is full of faith. The problem is on our end, we miss out on the opportunities. We don't tap into that faith and we don't advance and conquer and be all that God has called us to be. Amen? Our lack of faith causes the faith of God to be without effect in our life. Our lack of faith in certain areas causes the faith of God to have no effect in our life. But He has faith. It's like in this, in this you walk into this auditorium and it's dark. There is, there is electricity power. There is electrical power in this building. And, and my lack of not finding the switch doesn't mean there's no power in this building. What do I need to do? Switch the light on. 
connect to that power and then now I receive the benefits of that power. But if I don't switch the light on, does not mean there's no power. The power is there. It's constant. It's available. It's consistent. Day, night, any time, any day of the week, it's there. So for me, if I walk out and say, there's no light in that building. There's no power in that building. I didn't find it. I didn't, I, well, it doesn't change the fact that in that building there is power. So it does, So that's just a little example there that, that it, our lack of faith doesn't cause God's faithfulness and God's faith to, 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 stop, to stop. It won't stop, but it just causes us to be limited in our walk with God. Can you say amen? He is faithful and, and uh, he, he so wants to bless us. Look what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 says. For unto us, was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word that was preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in those that heard it. Is that up there? Hebrews 4.2. I want you to read these verses. Look at this. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in those that heard it. Wow. The Word of God is so powerful. The Word of God is powerful. It is God's Word. But God's Word to be powerful in our life must be mixed with faith. Amen. But it says here, the people of Israel did not profit from God's Word. They, were not, they did not find advantage from, of God's, from God's Word. God's Word had no effect in their life. Why? Because God's Word's not powerful? No, because they did not mix God's Word with faith. And so to not mix our faith with God's Word is a lost opportunity. It, for me to not have faith in God's Word does not change God's Word. It's a lost opportunity. For God's Word to be effective in my life. God's Word is powerful. God, I say God's Word is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. God's Word has power to change circumstances. God's Word has power to heal your body. God's Word has power. But it is powerless where there is no faith. So how many people read the Bible and they just read it like a book. How many people come to church and they hear sermon after sermon after sermon, revelation after revelation after revelation, and just in one ear and out one ear, it doesn't change that that word is powerful. Amen. To not mix it with faith is a lost opportunity. Amen. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word, not just hearers. We have too many that are just hearers of the word. And not doers of the Word. It's the moment that we do the Word that the Word of God has effect in our life. It starts to change everything. Now, you walking away and not putting God's Word into practice doesn't affect God. God is still God. He's still on His throne. He's still faithful. He still has power. It affects me. It affects us. We we find that in our life, God's Word is of no effect, not because of God's Word having no power, but because we have not mixed God's Word with faith. Amen? Are you getting this this morning? So if, if we believe not, that's fine, but God is faithful. And He's just waiting. He's just waiting for you to plug in. He's just waiting for you to believe. He's just waiting for you to connect with what He wants to do in your life, to mix His Word with your faith, and that's when things get exciting in your Christian life. Can you say amen, church? We miss out on attaining the promises of God with our faith. Our lack of faith does not stop God. It stops us. Our lack of faith does not stop God. It stops us. Us, but he is still faithful. My, he is so faithful. He is so patient. He is so loving. 
He is so faithful with this world that He continually reaches out to them. Amen. He is faithful. He wants to work with us. He wants to lead us. If we can believe in Him. God is faithful. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to verse 14. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to verse 14. Look what the word of the Lord says. Mark 16, verse 9 to verse 14. So what did we just read? If, if we do not believe, God is still faithful. He remains faithful. He remains faithful. So let's mix this word with faith today. Mix the word of God with faith today. But God is so faithful. Now, now listen to me. Now, talking to you as a, as a born again believer on, a, on the journey of faith, you're going to, in, on your walk with God, on the journey of faith, there's going to be different challenges that God gives to you, different opportunities, different seasons. And each season is going to demand faith. It's going to demand belief in God. I'm not talking about born again faith. Amen. I'm not talking about born again faith. I'm talking about faith that you need on the journey as God directs you, as God leads you. God, you're going to confront different obstacles. You're going to confront different situations. And each situation, each obstacle, each season that God takes you in, God is going to demand a certain level of faith. And many times on our walk with God, if we are honest with ourselves and honest with God, we don't believe. There's doubt. There's confusion. Amen. There's, there's, there's a, a sense of where's God? So, but I, what, what I want you to know that when you have those thoughts, God is faithful. When you have those, those, those circumstances, God is faithful. He remains. He'll be right there. And He'll be right there when you start believing. And in the meantime, what He does, He reaches out to you. He reaches out to you. He appears Himself to you. He speaks to you. He brings a preacher. He brings a revelation. He, 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 he shows you things so that you can get on the faith side because He's faithful. And He so wants to bless you he so wants to, you to be all that He's called you to be. He so wants you to open the doors that He has for you. He so wants to heal your body. He so wants you to be, be the anointed that He has called you to be. He's, he so wants to bless you. So because of His faithfulness, he will, he will try to reach out. He'll reach out to you and try to get you on the faith side. Now look here in Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to verse 14. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. Now, listen to this. Here are the disciples of Jesus. These are disciples of Jesus. Later on, it's, it'll be talking to the apostles. But these are the disciples of Jesus who are, who are mourning and they are weeping because in their, in their mind and in their eyes, their circumstance has turned sour. Their promise has died. Their promise has died. And in the midst of that, that failure and in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that sorrow, they, they forgot the promises of Jesus. That Jesus told them, it is needful for me to die and I will be three days in the grave, but I will rise again. So they've got this promise. They've got this promise from, from Jesus. But, but when you're going through, when you're going through the, the situation where, where all hell breaks loose and when there's, there's pain and when there's sorrow and when Jesus is in the grave, they, they forget His promises. They forget that He will rise again. And so... These disciples are, are crying, they are mourning, they are weeping, they're locked up in a house. Now look what happens in verse 11. And they, when they heard that He was alive 
and had been seen of her, look what it says, believed not. Unbelief. Hey, Jesus is alive. I saw him. Remember what he told us, that he will rise again. Remember his word. Remember, he's not a man that he should lie. He's alive. And they believed not. Nah, it can't be true. And they're mourning and they're crying. They believe not. Look at verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form. Everybody say appeared. He appeared. See, he's, he's faithful. <laughs> he's faithful. Okay, they don't believe, but I, I, I'm going to appear to them in another form. I'm going to approach myself to them. I'm going to show myself to them in another form because I love them so much. As they walked and went into the country and they went and they told them to the residue of the disciples, neither did they believe. No faith. These are disciples with no faith. How many believers are here this morning with no faith? How many Christians today, no faith? How many Christians come to church to sing to God, praise God, hear His Word, no faith, unbelief. Because of the circumstances in their life, they cannot see the reality of the promises of God working in the middle of that death. Now, verse 14, afterward, Jesus appears to the 11. Now he's, he appears to the apostles, not just the disciples, but now to the apostles. And look how the apostles are. The apostles, the 11, sat at meat and Jesus upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not which them which had seen him after he was risen. It's like Jesus, Jesus then begins to tell them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And he, and he gives them the great commission. It's like Jesus says, get out of that unbelief. I've got work for you to do. Remember Elijah, Elijah the prophet, the great prophet has just seen God do amazing miracles. He raises the dead. He calls fire from heaven. And then he, he, he's, he has expended all his, his energy, his spiritual strength has gone out of him. And Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you. And the Bible says, and Elijah saw what she said. He saw himself dead. And he goes and sits himself under a tree and he says, I've had enough. It is enough. I've had enough. Look how he's talking in this moment of unbelief. I've had enough. I'm no better than my fathers. I have no purpose. What am I doing here? And the angel of the Lord appears to him and says, and doesn't, doesn't really entertain his unbelief. Just says, come on, get up, eat and drink. Eat and drink. You need to eat and you need to drink. You need to eat something and you need to drink something. And then he went back to sleep and the angel of the Lord came back to him and said, come on, eat and drink. I'm faithful. I am faithful. Come on, say amen, church. I am faithful. He doesn't tell him off. He doesn't tell him, okay, you're, you're good for nothing. You're a crybaby. You're suicidal. I've had enough with you. You can, you know what? I'm going to cause someone else to do this. You're not fit for this journey. You're not fit for this ministry. You're not fit for this mission because of your unbelief. You're talking out of whack. You're talking out of faith. You're, you're, you're suicidal. And, but the, you know what? God, God doesn't say that. God says, I am faithful. You just need something to eat. You just need something to drink. You're just feeling down. Come on, come on. Eat and drink. Have a, have a nap. Have a sleep. Yeah. Amen. The prodigal son, he's gone out and he spent all that he has. He's dishonoured his father. He slept with prostitutes and partied up big and spent all his money. And he finds himself in the pig pen, wallowing around and rolling in the mud. And this is how bad things got for this man. He wanted to eat what the pigs were eating and the pigs wouldn't even give him their food. 
I mean, that's bad. He can't even eat what the pigs are eating. Mm. Things can get really bad. But God is faithful. He says, what am I doing here? I can't believe that I want to eat what the pigs are eating. And the servants in my father's house have more bread than they need. I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm just going to humble myself. And I say, Father, just do what you want with me. I know I deserve punishment. I know I deserve to be cast out and become a servant. But I'm willing for that to happen. And when he's coming back to his father's house, guess where the father is? Faithful. Faithful. See, it wasn't the father that suffered. It was the prodigal. See, the father was faithful. The father was there. The father had riches. The father had bread. The father had food. The father had servants. It wasn't the father's uh, wealth or the father's power that lost was, was void of effect. It was the son that was missing out on all the glory. But when he decided to come back, there's the father. Because even though you don't believe, he is faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Even though you don't believe, He is faithful. He is, come on church, I said He is faithful. Even though you don't believe, He is faithful. He is trustworthy. He remains. He's true. Come on, He's consistent. He's there all the time. He's waiting for you this morning. He's waiting for you to get serious with Him. He's waiting for you to plug in. He's waiting for you to connect with Him. But if you don't connect with Him, He's faithful. I said, He's faithful. These apostles, He comes into the room and they're full of doubt, unbelief. They did not believe. But we thought we had this promise. Now we're in this place of death. Where is God? No, He can't be alive. I don't believe. See, sometimes you in your walk, God gives you a promise. God gives you a dream. God gives you a vision. God gives you a calling. God gives you whatever it is that God's put before you. And then and you're walking and, and, and with Him and things are going well. But then you go into a season where there's death. You go into a season where, there's, where it's dark. You go into a season where there's persecution. You go into a season where you can't see it. And then someone comes along and says, the Bible says, come on. Bro. And you go, oh, no, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm really in a place of unbelief. I know what God said, but right now I'm struggling to see it. But God is faithful. See, I love love this. He appeared to the first disciples. They didn't believe. Okay, I'll appear in another form to the other disciples. And they didn't believe. And then He comes right in where the apostles are, the head honchos are, and they don't believe. But He appears to them. And when they, and, and the, oh, this is so powerful. Their, their, their lack of faith doesn't put Jesus off. See, that's why I want you to understand this morning, beloved. No matter where you are in your walk with God, He is faithful. He is faithful. He'll meet you right where you are. Right where you are. Your unbelief doesn't scare Him. Your questions about Him doesn't, doesn't put Him off. It doesn't, make him, it doesn't make Him not feel sure of Himself. God is very sure of Himself. And your questions about eternity and your questions about your anointing and your questions about your healing and your questions about the promise not happening in two years and your questions about when is God going to open that door and when is God going to save my children and when is God going to change my husband and my wife. Those questions don't put God off and it doesn't, doesn't cause Him to distance Himself from you. It just causes God to stay faithful. He's waiting. He's faithful. And what he will do, he's so loving, he will appear in another form. He'll reveal himself to you in another way. He'll bring another passage of his word to you. The pastor will preach another message that will speak to you. Someone will say something to you during the week and you think it's that person. It's Jesus appearing to you in another form, just saying, come on. I haven't forgotten about you. I haven't forgotten about the promise. I haven't forgotten about the calling. I haven't forgotten about what I spoke to you as a child. I haven't forgotten about your healing. He is faithful. Come on, church. I said, God is faithful. 
I haven't forgotten about your prayer. That prayer you've been praying for a long time. You've been praying for years about that. I haven't forgotten. He is faithful. Well, you say, man, is God listening? Is God hearing me? Is God there? Have I done something wrong? Is God angry? No, God's not angry. God's never angry with His children. He's faithful. I said He's faithful. But listen to this. But God's faithfulness doesn't mean that He doesn't rebuke us. I want you to see this. Because when He comes into the... These are the boys that are going to preach the gospel to the world. And here they are. Oh, weeping more. And, and it says, that, listen to this. He upbraided them because of their unbelief and their hardness of heart. And I hope I can get through this this morning. Their hardness of heart. They have become hard in their heart. What does that mean? Maybe there's some of you here this morning. You become hard in your heart with a promise. Now the word upbraided, listen to this. The word upbraided means literally to reproof, to correct. And it even means to reproach, to confront. So just because God is faithful doesn't mean He doesn't rebuke us and confront us and reprove us and correct us. In the case of the apostles, it's like, you know better. You should know better. You were with me for three and a half years. You heard me say I would rise again. So he rebukes them, but he's still faithful. See, he's like a father with a son or a daughter. A father, a mother, a good father and a mother. And there's a lot of fathers and mothers that, that, that are not there for their children. But a good father and a mother, regardless of the behavior of the children, will be there. Will remain faithful. But that doesn't mean that you don't correct. That doesn't mean that you don't rebuke. That doesn't mean that you don't confront. And that doesn't mean that you don't discipline. God is our Father and He disciplines. So what God would say to some of us this morning is, are you still lacking faith in that area? Are you still, are you still trying to figure that out two years later? Are you still struggling with that same issue? Are you still battling to believe me for this? God's faithfulness does not mean that He won't rebuke us and confront us. He upbraided them with their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Their hearts had become callous, destitute of spiritual perception, stubborn, dry, not soft. They had become hard. In their unbelief, they had become hard. Has anyone become hard here this morning in their unbelief? But God is faithful. Jesus is faithful. He appears to the apostles at the right time to soften their heart. Can you say amen, church, this morning? Maybe there's people here this morning, your heart has become hard. Their hardness of heart, callous, not soft, dry, destitute of spiritual perception, lost the ability to discern the move of God, lost the ability to discern His presence, His voice, become hard, hard. There are many people in the church, in the body of Christ, that have become hard in their heart. They've lost their softness. They've lost their perception to spiritual realities. They, they've become dry, and, and not because of sin, but because of their unbelief because of life's trials, life's pressures, life's problems have hit them so hard. And the inner question is, where is God? That question, where is God? That question, why is God not moving? That question is, when is God going to open the door? Can be exhausting for a believer. Can cause our hearts to become hard. And we can be hard in our hearts 
No, no spiritual perception. Our worship is gone. Our praise is gone. Our hunger for His Word has gone. And the reality is in the back of our minds, we won't say it publicly, we won't say it to anyone, is where's God? Where's the promise of God? And we know it's not the right thing to express with our mouth, but the truth is a large portion of Christians struggle with that. Is uh, the, We know what God said. We know He said he'll, he'll rise again from the dead, but it hasn't happened. And I'm finding it hard to believe. <laughs> and, not, and these guys, they didn't, just not, they didn't they just lack faith. That lack of faith had caused their hearts to become hard. But God is faithful. It's very hard to win someone back when their hearts become hard not soft anymore that's what happens in a marriage divorce happens in a marriage when the heart becomes hard towards the other person that's divorce that you no longer care about the other person's feelings anymore you no longer care about their tears you no longer care about their their desires you become so hard they can beg you they can cry you say I've seen that before you become hard It's very dangerous. And that's how these guys had become. In the space of two days. Nah, don't come and tell me Jesus is alive. Crazy. He's not alive. Peter said, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. What that means is... Forget about forget about the calling. Forget about the that that I would be a fisher of men. I'm gonna go and fish. I don't believe Jesus is alive. And he had become hard. But what I want you to see this morning is that Jesus, God, is faithful. Because that that unbelief, that hardness of heart, didn't stop Jesus from going into that very room. Jesus will go right where where you are and say, come on. And And he just begins to tell them, come on, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go into all the world and make disciples. Baptize. Come on, boys. And you see them, they got excited. Said, yeah, all right. And they went out. Because God is faithful. The last thing I want to say this morning is in Mark chapter 9, verse 20. Mark chapter 9, verse 20. It says, and they brought to Jesus a young man. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit tore him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And Jesus asked the father, how long is it since this came on the child, on on him? And And the father said from a child, what a question. What a question by Jesus. How long has this been going on? How long has this been happening? How long have you been praying that prayer? How long have you been asking God about that? How long have you been waiting? How long has your body been suffering? How long? What a question. How long? This morning, how long have you been praying? How long have you been believing? How long has this been going on in your life, in your marriage, with one of your children? How long Have you been praying that prayer and hoping that God will answer? How long? And the father said, from a child. Since he's a a child, he's been possessed by this demon. It throws him into the fire. It throws him into the water. It's been a long time. The father was hurting. The father was broken. No father wants to see their son or their daughter hurting from a child. Verse 22, And oftentimes, It has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Look at this. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Everybody say, if. See, he didn't believe. He said, but if you can do anything. He should have said, but because you can do anything. But this man had no faith. He said, but if you can do anything, please have compassion on us and help us if now when that that if didn't cause Jesus to say I'm out of here you've got no faith 
What do you mean if? I'm Jesus. <laughs> Why are you questioning me? I'm moving away. No. Because even though we don't believe, He is faithful. Verse 23, And Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. In other words, it's not about me. Jesus is saying, no, no, it's not me. I, I'm faith. It's not about me. I'm faithful. It's, it don't, don't say if I can. No, I can. The question is, can you? If you can believe. It's not about if I'm faithful. If you are faithful. It's not about if I have faith. But if you can have faith. It's not about me. I'm as big as I'll ever be. I am as full of faith as I will ever be, Jesus was saying. I am as faithful as I will ever, ever be. I am so powerful. I am so anointed. I am everything. It's not, not, it's, the question is not about me. The question is, if you can believe, I'm here. I'm waiting. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm here. Come around me. Plug into me. Be a doer of my word. Take me seriously. Connect. Be grounded. Read my word. Pray. Plug into the church. Get serious about God. And you watch what God begins to do in your life because He is faithful. And He says to them, no, it's about you. And I love, the, I love what this man says. He just, he just wraps it up in a nutshell. And straight away, the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Can you say amen to the Word of God this morning? Lord, I believe. But He, 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 if, he made sure that He's praying. This is one of the most powerful prayers in the Bible. One of the most powerful prayers. Lord, I believe. But He knew that He didn't believe. So He just... He sort of like put Jesus in the corner, but help my unbelief. And what did Jesus do? He healed the boy. See, it didn't put Jesus off. It didn't cause Jesus to walk away. God's looking for people today that will just humble themselves and say, God, I put my total trust in your faithfulness. I put my total trust in your faith. I put my trust in your power. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how this son's going to be healed. I don't know how this is going to change. I don't know how I'm going to go into those arenas that you have called me to go into. I don't know how that door is going to open. I don't know how my marriage is going to be saved. I don't know how there's going to be restoration. I, I don't know how. One thing I know, you're faithful. You're faithful. So can you help me in my unfaithfulness? Can you help me in my unbelief? I put my trust in you. And, and Jesus healed, healed the little boy and he was set free. Some of you this morning need to pray, Jesus, help my unbelief. Help me in the areas of my life where I've lost my faith, where I've stopped believing. Help me in the areas of my faith where I've lost my confidence, where I've lost my trust. And I've become a little bit hard in that area. I've become callous. I've become callous in that area. I've become dry in that area. God, Your presence doesn't move me anymore. Your presence doesn't cause me to go to tears anymore. You're, reading the Bible is so callous. It's so hard. It's so dry. I find nothing in reading the Bible. God, I need You. I need an awakening in my life. I need You to touch me. I need, I need You to help me in the areas where I've lost faith. I really don't believe You're going to do it. I really don't believe You're going to heal the body. I really don't believe You're going to open that door. God, but I know You told me. I know that's a promise. But I've become hard in that area. I've become callous in that area. I've become tough in that area. Would you do something, Lord? And God's not going to say, you know, Alex, get away. No, no, you, I don't want people talking like that. He's not going to say, Meliana, no, no, I don't want to hear that. Go. No, He's going to say, my faith is sufficient for you, hallelujah. My faith is sufficient for you. And you know what? There's going to be a resurrection of things that have died in your life. There's going to be a resurrection of prayers that you've been praying for a long time. 
because God is faithful. So whether you don't believe this morning, if you don't believe this morning, God is faithful. But if you stay like that, He's not affected, I'm affected. So we might as well plug in. We might as well worship Him. We might as well praise Him. We might as well say, Lord, help my unbelief. And He will take over. Amen. Let's all stand up this morning.